As the trade deadline loomed and Suns fans were waiting to find out what James Jones would do, he didn't wait at all. Six days before the trade deadline, James Jones and the Phoenix Suns traded cash to the Milwaukee Bucks for Torrey Craig, who filled an open roster spot. A move that seemed innocuous at the time, but has seemed more and more important as the Suns approach the playoffs. My name is Mike, I'm here with Sam, and on today's big question, we're covering how the Suns got Torrey Craig for free. Here we go. All right, Sam, it's clear to me why the Bucks gave Torrey Craig away. And more than anything, I think it comes down to the fact that they didn't really value him. Uh, in 40 games with Milwaukee, Torrey played in just 14 games over his time there and only averaged 11 minutes per game in those games. Once he got to Phoenix and played in his first game, he played every game since then and averages almost 16 minutes per game in those games. He's already played more games in Phoenix, even though he was on the Bucks roster for twice as, as many games there. And it only took him six games in Phoenix to score more points than his entire time in Milwaukee. Um, and for the Bucks, they just wanted P.J. Tucker. And they were desperate to not pay like a really high tax penalty to keep Craig, who they saw as like redundant with P.J. once P.J. Tucker was on the roster. So for me, initially, I wasn't that surprised that the Bucks let Torrey Craig go because I didn't consider it like this massive move for the Suns. But more and more that I watch him with the Suns, I am surprised that the Bucks let him go. What do you think? Yeah, well, I have to agree that when listeners of the podcast also can hold me accountable, when this happened, I basically brushed it off as a nothing move. Not that I was down on it, but I just didn't expect Craig to have that much uh, of an impact. If you remember at the time, uh, Abdul Nader was actually playing pretty well. But the further we get into Craig's tenure with the Suns, uh, you said that the Bucks didn't really value him. Now I'm thinking, what's not to value? I mean, this is a guy who totally respects all of the tenets of modern basketball. He's switchable three through five. He, he's starting to play more small ball center in these Suns lineups. Maybe switchable even. He can guard shooting guards, maybe even point guards occasionally. Um, he obviously has more of an offensive game than P.J. Tucker, who I love P.J. Tucker, but his offensive game at this point is, is basically just reduced to shooting wide open threes mm -hmm. in the corner. And other than that, he's totally useless on offense. Whereas Torrey, we see him scrapping for offensive rebounds. Uh, we see him cutting in transition. We, we just see him being able to do more on, on both ends of the court. Um, so I, I really don't get it because this is a guy who has absolutely excelled uh, for the Suns so far. And it, he looks like he's basically a lock for the playoff rotation, the way that things are uh, going. Yeah, and I almost think that Coach Bud doesn't really get the benefit of the doubt here as far as he made the right choice to not really play Torrey Craig because, well, he doesn't have the greatest record in the playoffs. Like, when it really matters, he... And, you know, it's kind of odd because he does play a lot of players. Like, one of the biggest criticisms with Coach Bud was he didn't play Giannis enough minutes with the Bucks, but for some reason, Torrey Craig just could not crack the rotation on a regular basis there. It's just very, very odd. And and it, it worked out well for the Suns. And some people said that the Bucks needed a roster spot. They actually didn't. They traded multiple players for P.J. Tucker. They did this entirely to save money, uh, which, you know, you can argue is good or bad. It's really only benefits the owner of the team. So a bizarre trade for them. Uh, they might regret it. P.J. Tucker is a good player. And ultimately, for, from the Bucks perspective, P.J. really only has to be good in the playoffs. Like, even if he's not very good now in the regular season, it doesn't really matter um, for them. So let's talk about Torrey Craig's fit on the Suns, though, because that's the main reason I wanted to do this video. We haven't gotten a chance to really dig into this on our YouTube channel yet. Um, he's 30 years old, six foot eight, right-handed forward. As you talked about, could even potentially play center. He's listed as a small forward. He really plays power forward now. That's kind of how the NBA works. Uh, and oddly enough, when I was looking at this, this surprised me. He's only in his fourth year in the NBA. Uh, he's kind of just had a different path to get to the NBA. So even though he's 30, he's actually only in his fourth year. How have you liked his fit with the Suns so far? Uh, I mean, it's it's been amazing to speak to what you're talking about there. Very much like P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker, when he originally came to the Suns, was you know, 27 or, or whatever. But um, I've been really impressed with what Torrey's able to do, specifically the way that he, first of all, he attacks the glass. Um, tell me, stop me if this surprises you, Craig averages more rebounds per 36 than Dario Saric, both on yeah. the offensive and defensive glass. And, you know, granted, Dario Saric is not some big imposing player, but he's your backup center 
after DeAndre Ayton. And there's a good argument right now that after DeAndre Ayton, when he comes out of the game, the next best guy you have on the roster to kind of set the tone physically, there's an argument there that then in some ways that's Torrey Craig, the way he attacks the glass, the way he plays defense. I think Craig's defense is, is very, very translatable to playoff basketball. And in fact, I think it's interesting. I don't blame any national pundits, let me put it this way for doubting the Suns due to inexperience. But I do think they should be giving more credit to to some of the guys on this roster. Specifically, you look at the duo of Torrey Craig and Jay Crowder. These are two guys Mm -hmm. who went on deep, deep playoff runs last year. Not, Not three years ago, not five years ago, but last year. Jay Crowder, we've covered on this channel before, the way that he was the primary defender on Giannis. For, for that entire series in the Eastern Conference. Then you look at Torrey Craig. Played 375 minutes in the playoffs last year, Mike. Here's who he spent the most possessions guarding, according to the NBA's website. One, Donovan Mitchell. Two, Kawhi Leonard. Three, Paul George. Four, Lou Williams. And mm. five, LeBron James. This was a guy who... Uh, the Nuggets also had Jeremy Grant, who's a very good defender last year, but, but it was kind of Grant and it was Craig that they would put on the top offensive players on the other team he was trusted with those matchups and so now as the Suns go into kind of a similar situation as they prepare for what's hopefully going to be a deep playoff run this year you've got Crowder you've got Craig they've got experience going up against the elite superstars of the NBA and you're going to need that in the playoffs yeah and I think we should make it clear that we understand that he's just a bench player coming off the bench for the Suns. We're not trying to be hyperbolic here and, and claim that he's going to have the difference that like a superstar is going to make because he's not. Like Ultimately, he's probably going to have uh, 15 minutes a game in the playoffs. But the fact that James Jones was able to get a guy like that without giving up anything... I think it's it's worth celebrating because cash it's rare. technically, but yeah, but cash, cash is not no anything. asset. Yeah. Like, you know, like no asset yeah. was given up, uh, and I think that's that's something. Like I said, it's it's worth celebrating at the very least. Defensively versatile, you just gave you just gave the list of the players he spent the most time guarding. You'll notice that those players vary from six foot nine to six foot two, probably, mm-hmm. and and that's a guy who can guard multiple positions, which is great. Especially for the Suns, like we, they just played the Clippers recently. The Clippers went ultra small. If you have to put him at center and he's capable of guarding guys that can play small ball center, that's going to be pretty valuable. But offensively, he's he's been pretty good too. He's had good chemistry with Cameron Payne. I was digging into the stats. It was kind of interesting. The, the stats don't actually look that good for when he's spent time with Chris Paul on the court so far. But if I've learned anything about Chris Paul so far, it's just that he's constantly gathering data about the players that he plays with. And ultimately, he'll find the best way to utilize Torrey Craig as as he gets going later on in the season. But here's a stat. Since, since Torrey Craig joined the team and actually played his first game, he's tied for second on the team in true shooting percentage. So he's the second most efficient player on the team since he joined. Tied with the blazing hot Javon Carter and that's under <laughs> yeah I know uh, crazy is next that week's video no yeah yeah maybe next week's video number one by the way in that time is DeAndre Ayton uh, which we've talked about a lot in our podcast but has been playing excellent so far the one thing I want to ask you and and I think I'll know the answer on this for you this has to be unsustainably good efficiency right I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we're talking about a 33% career three-point shooter who's shooting 40% on the Suns. Traditionally, if you wanted to take a conservative approach, yeah, you'd probably say that regresses. But maybe he's legitimately just improved his shot from year to year. And if that sticks, combined with the cutting um, that we've already seen from him, the ability to fill the lane in transition, then this guy's just going to be a great, great, great asset uh, to the bench. And uh, pretty good nickname in Scory Tory, right? I mean, Scory Tory. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I keep say we. Him it. I say we keep it. I mean, he's the second most efficient player on the Suns since you joined, so I think he's earned that. So, will Tory Craig be an absolute difference maker in the playoffs? Like, probably not. But enough that you can see the possibility of his defense swinging a game at some point, or maybe even having twenty points off the bench in a game that could be a massive difference in a close game. More than anything else, I'm just surprised that James Jones was able to get a useful and versatile player who will have a role in the playoffs without giving up a single asset. 
So thanks for watching. Drop a comment about how you felt about the Tory Craig trade now that we've seen him on the Suns with enough time to have an opinion about it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you've enjoyed our videos. Check out our new video on the selflessness of Devin Booker now. And if you're looking for more Phoenix Suns coverage, subscribe to our podcast, The Timeline of Phoenix Suns Podcast.